How is everyone today? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine, Principal Worldwide Evangelist for Adobe Creative Cloud, and um, we're going to be talking about something which um, is all over the interwebs today, which is the Yanni or Laurel debate. So if you woke up this morning and launched Twitter or Facebook or I'm sure anything else, you probably saw a whole slew of uh, messages going on about this posting that had been done with this audio file and what are they saying? And some people said they heard Laurel, some people said they heard Yanni, and then there were all these reasons as to why. why well, you know, this is because of this and because of that. Um, so what I'm going to attempt to do today and what I hope you'll enjoy watching today is showcasing to you what you can use Adobe Audition for to really reveal what's going inside of an what's going on inside of an audio file just like this. And then you can decide what you hear because to quote my good friend, the late great Harry Nielsen, I didn't know him personally, but I considered him a friend. Uh, well, let me just let him tell it to you straight. This is a line from Harry from 1971, and it goes like this. The thing is, you see what you want to see, and you hear what you want to hear. Dig. I don't know of any truer words than that. You see what you want to see, you hear what you want to hear. Everyone might hear things a little bit differently. Certainly people see things differently. And there's a lot of reasons why we hear things differently. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. But as I said, you know, I'm not here to say this is proof, this is that, this is this, although you might just get some of that revealed to you. But it's the idea that the thing is you see what you want to see and you hear what you want to hear. Dig. Harry Nelson. Okay. So let's get right into it. So we're going to start here in the multi-track and much like everyone else, I just uh, recorded the sound from uh, that, uh, that blogger's post. Um, directly into Audition here. So let's first take a listen to the original audio as it exists in that little loopable uh, Snapchat or Instagram story, whatever it was. Laurel. 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 Okay, you can even hear like the mouse click or whatever. So again, there it is. Do you hear Laurel? Do you hear Yanny? Okay. So here's the thing. Uh, one of the first things that I like to say is, well, depending upon what you're listening to this on will absolutely affect how this is heard. You know, this morning when I happened to first listen to this, I had my iPhone Bluetooth to an old school um, Beats speaker, <clears throat> which is kind of blown out. So it's already bassy, but it's super, super bassy. Not a lot of high end in there. And I was like across the room. So when I just played this thing, and of course the, the, the sound comes from across the room, echoes and gets to me from across the room, I actually heard Yanni at first. Super bassy, super low endy. Didn't really hear it, even the clickies or anything like that. And I go, oh, okay, whatever. Um, but then I listened directly on the phone speaker and thought, oh, I think I kind of hear Laurel now. Now, keep in mind, there's a lot of things that affect how you perceive things. One, as just mentioned, the listening device that you're actually on. If you listen to this on a beat speaker with super bass, or you're listening to this on earbuds, or you're listening to this just on your phone speaker, or you're listening to this like in my studio here on professional mixing speakers, it's going to sound a little bit different. And keep in mind, do you listen to earbuds every day? Do you work out with earbuds? Do you have those things cranked? Are you one of those people on the plane who at you know 36,000 feet sitting next to you, I can hear Chances are, you might have incurred a little premature hearing loss, in which case your high end is already rolled off. By the way, this also happens naturally with age for all humans. We just eventually start to lose uh, the ability to hear particular frequencies, generally above the default of kind of like 16K, and then really things start to trickle off 15, 14, 12, 10, you know. And then there's just all sorts of other things involved. Were you in a quiet environment? Was it noisy? Was it loud? Blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to do was kind of reveal what we can evidence here via EQ. And we're going to use simple low pass and high pass filtering. Low pass filter means <clears throat> low pass, high cut, right? So let the low frequencies come through, but cut the high frequencies. So I'm going to start at 24K. This was recorded into Audition at 48K. Let's go ahead and turn this on. And I'm simply going to start uh, rolling off the high frequencies till we get to around 830 or so. That seems to be kind of the threshold of where even I noticed a sonic change. You might still not, but take a listen and listen to what happens as we play this back and start to roll off the high end. Here we go. Laurel. 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 
Laurel. Laurel. Laurel. Laurel. Laurel. Laurel. Laurel. Laurel. Laurel. Okay. So, again, depending upon what you're listening on, and maybe your brain now is already so scrambled that you can't, you, you don't know what you're hearing anymore. But there is a bit of a difference with the high end rolled off. You perceive one version of this over the other. Now, similarly, or in the opposite way, I should say, if we turn on the high pass filter, high pass, the opposite of low pass, high pass, low cut, right? That's an easy way to remember what these things do. Same thing. So let's start with it without any roll off, or in this case at 20 hertz. And I'll do this maybe a little bit more aggressively around 30 dB per octave. And I'll start sweeping through uh, and again, take a listen to what this sounds like. Laurel. 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 Okay. So with no bass in there, no low end frequency at all, I saw a couple of people on the interwebs this morning. This definitively, obviously says this, and if you don't hear that, you're crazy. You see what you want to see and you hear what you want to hear. What is it? This doesn't really tell us anything. I saw a bunch of definitive videos this morning on YouTube claiming that this is what it is. That doesn't really tell me anything. But here's where it's going to start to get interesting. So um, because I recorded this just by accident into a stereo file, I just separated this out into mono streams. It obviously is mono. So here's the same thing in mono. Again, same exact file recorded off the internet. Laurel. Laurel. And now we're going to go into what's called our spectral frequency display. Now this allows us to see frequency over time. For anyone who's never checked this out before, frequency over time. So you've got your frequencies along the Y vertical axis here, time along the X, and color, my friends, equals amplitude. The closer the color is to yellow in this case, the louder the amplitude at that particular frequency. So there's a ton of yellow right here. That's between the range of approximately 100 hertz to 1,000 hertz. Those are also known as the fundamentals of our speaking voices. There's a lot of key fundamentals of speech in that frequency range. So we can kind of see where all this energy occurs. By the way, this was recorded off the internet, so you can also see coming off of uh, that Instagram video or whatever it was, all of my frequencies are basically capped meaning there's nothing there above around 7K, right? This is, this is approximately 7,000 hertz right here where I'm drawing this line. So to be honest, I mean, there's not a lot of frequency content to deal with here in the first place. This in and of itself causes this meh because we're missing a lot of detail. Heck, this is, this is, this is about 2,000 hertz, give or take, higher fidelity than a classic analog telephone. What? Yeah, this is like, you know, just slightly better than AM radio, although there is a lot more bass, all right? So there's not a lot of frequency content here to begin with. But what this actually allows us to do as we zoom in is to see what the frequency and sonic characteristics are like of whatever this word is, whether it's Yanni or Laurel, okay? And as you look at the image here, you see you've got this little, let me grab my... Uh, my paintbrush because it'll just be easier to showcase here. You can see you've got this dip here, all right? And then you can see again some of the fundamentals down below and there's this very noticeable kind of wave pattern that's happening here, right? This is this is how this was said and that's what it looks like. So you start to understand what it is that you're looking at so that you can understand better what it might be saying. Now, one of the things that you can do in our spectral frequency display is not unlike using the high pass, low pass. If you make a selection just in a particular frequency range, you can hear what that actually sounds like discreetly by itself. So if I just select all the way down to the bottom here, now, by the way, there's also a bunch of noise, this dark red consistent linear thing that you see along the, th the floor, basically, the bottom, that's noise. But now if we just listen to say zero to around 1200 hertz, take a listen. Laurel, 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 Laurel. All right, and let's drag this up a little bit higher now. And now let's go to, again, around 1200 hertz, 
to the top of our range, maybe we'll just extend this a little bit up here, to around 7K. And again, you might be sitting there right now going, eh, sounds the same to me, doesn't sound different. I still hear Laurel, I still hear Yanni. You haven't shown me anything yet. Okay. So what do we do here? Well, again, I was watching some other videos and some people like, okay, well, let's re remove the noise and see if that makes a difference. It doesn't. The noise is not our problem here. What does the word Laurel look like? What does Yanni look like? Well, guess what? I decided to record myself doing just that. So you can see here, if we pull up, let's go to our multi-track again. I recorded myself saying in the same kind of tonality, same kind of way, right on this microphone right here, saying the word Laurel. Yanni. Oh, sorry, Yanni. 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 Right, I was even trying to get that, uh, that kind of throaty, croaky thing in there, which when I did it this morning wasn't hard because that's usually what I sound like in the morning. And then I recorded myself saying Laurel. 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 Again, trying to have that same kind of tonality. The key is, I'm saying these specific words, Laurel and Yanni, all right? Cool. Now, here's what we're going to do. I see someone saying, what is the point of this? You're gonna get the point right now, Matthew, because the point is we're gonna look at what these actually look like. So let's start with Laurel here, okay? So I'm gonna zoom in like this. Again, we're looking at frequency over time. And let's specifically look at a range. Most of the viewable energy here, most of the frequency content is between zero and say 3K, all right, 3000 Hertz. So when I look at this, what I can see, again, take a look at the pattern here, all right? There's this noticeable kind of V-shaped pattern in the upper mids here. And then we have this kind of ramp thing happening down here, all right? So you can see that very clearly. Okay, so that's Laurel. Now let's take a look at Yanni. Same thing, we're gonna zoom in here. Let's try and zoom out to the same level. Let's go to the same frequency range, okay? Now this one, it doesn't quite have that same defined V. You can, you can see that there's similarity. Visually, in and of itself, it's showing us that there's some similarity there, but it doesn't quite look the same. And now, let's take a look at the actual recording of it. So here is the actual recording via spectral. Let's go to the same frequency range here of Laurel and Yanni. And notice that it, too, has this very defined kind of V, and it has this little kind of mustache-like waves, and then these subsequent harmonic waves after that. Interesting. So what I did from here was, I just took screenshots, just like this. Let me move my cursor out of the way there. Deselect. And I just took some screenshots, all right? So here's a screenshot of the original. By the way, just so you can play it back in here. Laurel, Laurel, Laurel. Okay, this is the original file. And then I took a picture of this, Yanni. All right, and here's Yanni. Yanni, Yanni. And then I took a picture of this. All right, we'll zoom it to the same level here, approximately. Get the cursor out of the way, that's fine, it's not in the way. Like this, okay? So I took those three screenshots, which you can now see on my desktop right here. The original. Uh, Yanni and Laurel. I'm looking at the time when I shot them. And then to compare these, I brought them into Photoshop and did a little side-by-side. -side. And my friends, it's what you see that reveals what potentially was actually said. So if you take a look here, let me go ahead and change my view so I'm not in the way. Here's our original. On the left, again, just to showcase to you, here it is, larger, right there, so I'm not fooling anybody, right? This is the first shot we just took. There it is. That's our original. And then there's Yanni. And here's our, sorry, whoop, that's, that's the wrong one. There's Yanni right there. So there's Yanni. 
And then the last one, Laurel. And there's Laurel. So what do you see? Look at the patterns, right? Visually, look at the pattern. Yes, I see everyone's like, I win, I win, I knew it. All right, so again, my friends, what is it? Is it Laurel, is it Yanni? You decide. Visually, when we take a picture spectrally, with me just revoicing those same things, again, trying to say it in the same tempo and the same kind of way, there's just more obvious similarity between the original and when I said Laurel com compared to when I said Yanni. That's just, that's just me doing it. You saw it happen there. And that's it, the great debate of May 16th, 2018. So what does this really teach us? Well, it teaches us to look at sound in different ways. Uh, the spectral frequency display is not only an amazing way to understand you know, what something, what's actually being said, but more importantly, as I showcase to you, if you've got noise, if you've got buzzes, hums, or different types of sonic anomalies inside of your file, some of which are inaudible, you've got so many possibilities, not only in hearing sound, but in also visualizing sound. But like everything, and like I always say, at the end of the day, really? The thing is, you see what you want to see, and you hear what you want to hear. Dig. And that's what it's all about, friends. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me wherever you are in the world, and we will see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.